All right, everybody, welcome back. New York City's public schools wrapped up their anti-bullying initiative called Respect for All Week to help students and teachers deal with intimidation and bias-based harassment. One in five children report being bullied, with middle school students reporting the highest incidence. Yeah, the New York City Council is proposing an anti-bullying task force to address the issue in schools. Psychologist Dr. Aaron Bogan is joining us this morning to help us uh, go beyond bullying to discuss how we can create psychologically safe environments for our kids. So good morning, Dr. Bogan. Good Thanks morning. for being morning. with us. Thank you so much. So you are part yes. of the senior leadership for the nonprofit Equal Opportunity Schools, right? right? So yes. you have access to a lot of data. Yes. And, and so it really bullying has evolved over the years. So now it's cyberbullying. Yes. So what are some of the stats that you have come across? Yes, yeah, so um, the data show us that bullying is still a very uh, prevalent issue, a very stubborn issue. We're seeing increases in bullying. Um, nationally, as you mentioned, you know, we're seeing that one in five, so 20% of children have reported some kind of bullying at some point. Um, and we're seeing some differences in um, the kind of bullying that girls are reporting and boys are reporting. Girls are reporting uh, generally more uh, cases of bullying. So 24% of girls have experienced some sort of bullying um, compared to 17% of boys. Um, what's interesting, however, is that uh, there are different forms. And you know now we have cyberbullying, which has um, over the years really increased. And so over the last few years, we've gone from 18% of folks reporting to have experienced this kind of bullying to uh, more than double, 37 percent. Um, but we see that girls are reporting a type of bullying that seems to be more emotional, targeting yeah. um, rumors. And, um, and boys are experiencing more of those physical threats, sort of what we generally think of when we think yeah. of bullying. Um, but girls are also very vulnerable and experiencing more cyberbullying, and we're seeing those patterns yeah. um, nationally with girls leading, but also the same patterns in New York. Mm -hmm. So um, girls reporting um, more cyberbullying, and we know the consequences for girls also are a little more complicated, yeah. um, as we're seeing in some of the outcomes. Yeah, and, and that's one the one form. There's also anti-Semitism that's out there now, yep. microaggressions as well. How that's is that right. playing into it? Yes, and so uh, about 30% of the bullying cases we see are race-related, mm. which means that um, children are saying that um, I'm being treated unfairly because of my race. Yeah. And so it's interesting because when we're seeing uh, race-related bullying, it can range from racial slurs um, to, you know, we've seen these articles with swastikas painted uh, you know, in the hallways yeah. and nooses in bathrooms. And so um, in actual changes to the environment to send threatening messages, mm -hmm. um, threatening text messages. Um, but we also see a correlation often with, um, with educators experiencing uh, discrimination when we start to see some of this um, race-related um, bullying happen. And it's not always peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, during the pandemic, a lot of the uh, bullying we saw, uh, particularly with uh, children of color and black children in particular, um, was teacher to student. Wow. And That's so shocking. I feel that my teacher is treating me unfairly wow. or leaving me out or missing my potential. And so that when we see bullying happening, race related bullying happening um, at the school level, it's usually a symptom of a culture mm -hmm. also mm -hmm. in that school. Mm -hmm. yeah. A lot of Teachers may also be experiencing some of that racial discrimination, yeah. um, but when we see it in the classroom, that means there's something going on in that environment. But all of these types of yeah. bullying affect psychological safety. That's absolutely what does that mean exactly, and how yes. can we provide or, or create a more safe environment? Yes, so psychological safety is a set of conditions in an environment, and so it is an environment in which you feel uh, free to speak up, you feel safe um, asking questions, you feel safe trying something new without being punished, mm -hmm. um, you feel that you can bring your whole identity to the space without it being compromised or having to sort of shrink back or hide certain parts of who you are. Um, and so those are conditions when we see bullying and see sort of the absence of that, it's an adult problem. Bullying is an adult problem yeah. and it really is pointing us to the fact that 
adults are not creating spaces where children can feel as though they belong. So what do we do? So there are a few things that I think are really important. Um, first is, you know, when we start to uh, see bullying, I know it's, you know, we often think about that victim and how do we protect this child, but bullying is often a cry for help. Mm -hmm. And it often is signaling that there is something that is happening in this environment that's allowing this kind of behavior to operate. And so um, the first thing that I would suggest is teaching children emotion language. So giving them the vocabulary to say, this is how I feel. The next development that comes after children gain that is they begin to recognize feelings in other children. Okay. That's the basis for empathy. And we know the more opportunities that we have to build that empathy skill mm -hmm. among children, that's when we start to see re reductions in bullying and some of this disruptive behavior. It's also important that we're teaching our kids to um, regulate their emotions and modeling that. Yeah. Okay. And so when we as adults are modeling to children how to, as my mother says, talk, talk yourself out of the tree. Mm. Yes. Um, go from that stressful situation to the inner dialogue that guides you to that peaceful place. So yep. what do you tell yourself to get out of that tree? That's something that children can take with them in any situation. That mm -hmm. becomes their script and their guide. And that's the basis for resilience. Right. Wow. We're yeah. going to have to leave it there because yes. we're out of time. But a great topic Thank and you. great tips yeah. as well. Thank, Thank you. Because it's so important, everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah.